Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan here and uh, I received uh, this question from one of my students uh, in which the student was asking me to help uh, on this one uh, linear algebra cross 132 okay consider the system of equations c cos beta plus b cos gamma equal to a c cos alpha plus a cos gamma equal to b b cos alpha plus a cos beta equal to c where a b c alpha beta and gamma are constants given that b and c are not equal to zero use kramer's rule to show that cos alpha is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc now uh, the first thing to do here is to recall uh, what the kramer's rule specifies okay so it specifies that okay that uh, for a if you are given a uh, a matrix a a matrix of coefficients or from a linear system then you can determine the solution xi of that given linear system from the quotient of uh, the determinant of the original matrix coefficient matrix a whose ith column has been replaced by b then if you get the determinant of such a matrix and then divide it by the determinant of a then you get xi okay so this is basically what the kramer's rule is all about so as you can see guys we need to determine the matrix a the capital letter a so let's go ahead go ahead and do that let me pick a different color for that uh, let's take the black one which is a little bit bold and visible so the so let's we say uh okay let the coefficient matrix let the coefficient matrix a be equal to now we, we go back to the system the given system and we try to uh, to write down the coefficients of our variables now now maybe before we do that maybe before we do that let's let's start by saying let as you can see from this linear system the constants or these colors are a b c but these are nonlinear. Let's take the cos the cosines to be um, our variables. So let uh, cos alpha in the uh, Greek alphabet alpha comes first. So let cos alpha be equal to x one cos beta. Let cos beta be equal to x two, and let uh, cos gamma be equal to x3 now we can rewrite the original system therefore in terms of these x1s x2 x3s as uh, as you can see guys we don't have any cos alpha in the first equation so the the, the coefficient of cos alpha will be zero cos alpha it's not there okay let me not confuse someone let's just write whatever is there so it's c so we can say therefore the system the linear system becomes C and cos beta is x2 uh, 
plus. I'm just replacing cos the cos alpha, cos beta, and cos gamma by this uh, supposition here. Yeah. We did suppose that let those guys be variables x1, x2, x3. So we're just replacing. There's nothing uh, much there. So we say b uh, x sorry x3 there equal to a. This should be our first equation. The second one goes like uh, C x1 because we have cos alpha now plus uh, a x3 equal to b and lastly b x1 plus a x2 equal to c this is our new linear system in terms of uh, new variables x1 x2 x3 now we can immediately see that the coefficient matrix capital letter a is equal to now we take the coefficient of our variables now in the first equation we don't have x1 in other words the co the constant or the coefficient for x1 is a zero there and uh, the one for x2 is a c and the one for x3 is a p and um, for the second equation we have c zero a the last equation we have b a zero okay we close this matrix the coefficient matrix is that and uh, the vector b is a column vector of the arguments on the far right, right hand side of our system so the vector b is none other than a b c uh, so let me just clarify. It's very unfortunate we're using uh, common letters here. We have vector b and also there's a constant b in there. So b is a constant, but b with the bottom line is a vector. Okay, it's a column vector. Those two are quite different anyway. So now from here, you remember guys from this formula that I placed up here in green. I will, for my for me to get so i need to calculate the, the the question asks me to find cos alpha and cos alpha is equal to x1 so if i go back to the kramer's formula x1 is determined using determinant of a1 b all right over determinant of a so i need these pieces together i need to calculate them and then later on bring them together to find my x1 okay so i need to determine uh, the determinant so i need the determinant of the original matrix a which is not modified so the determinant of matrix a there are several options that i can take um, we can take cofactor expansions along uh, the first row or maybe along the second row or along the third row or any other column that we choose uh, the strategy is to choose a row with the most number of zeros or a column with the most number of zeros so in this case um, if we expand along the uh, even the first row along the first row the then we will have uh we have the sign generator first and um, the first position is position one one remember the formula says minus one to the power of i plus j times a i j times the uh, matrix i j okay so this would be the perfect expansion so if I sum all these along uh, a certain row or along a certain column, then I'll get my determinant. 
So in, in our case, I'm expanding along the first row. Okay, let's just write it along the first row. Okay, so the determinant of A is equal to the first entry is position 1, 1. So the formula becomes minus 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 uh, times, um, let me just write the formula first, M11 there plus minus 1 to the power. The second position is position 1, 2 along the first row, so it will be 1 plus 2, A12, M12 plus minus 1, minus 1 gen to the power of I plus J generates the sign to be assigned to the entry AIJ, okay? So the last entry is position 1, 3, so that should be 1 plus 3, A1, 3, M1, 3. Now, if we simplify this, you end up with, so minus 1 to the power of 2 becomes positive, so we remain with A11, M11 minus, because minus one to the power of three is, three is odd, so minus one to the power of odd number, then you get up, you get a minus one. So this should be A12, M12, and lastly, one plus three is four, and four is even, minus one raised to the power, an even number, then you become positive, therefore we have a plus A13. M13. So let's go ahead and try to to plug in um, our values. What is uh, uh, A11? A11 is zero. It's this position. Okay. So zero multiply by M11. So if I close the first row, the entire first row, and the first column, I'll remain with the determinant of the matrix 0, A, A is 0, like that, then minus, according to the formula, position, okay, entry A12 is C, determinant of, if I close the first row containing C, and the middle column containing C, then I'll remain with CB, A is 0, like that, then lastly, the entry A13 is a B. Then the determinant that remains is uh, for the matrix C0, B, A, like that. And eventually, 0 times anything, I'll get a 0. So this quantity here, guys, is a 0. I don't need to evaluate that. So I'll just remain with negative c in brackets c times zero zero minus a b so we have zero minus a b plus b out c times a it's a c minus zero okay so as you can see minus c into that bracket then i'll have a b c plus ABC, so I'll end up with 2ABC. We have calculated the determinant of A. Now we need, uh, remember, remember guys, why are we calculating this? We said, according to this formula, if we want X1, so we will need determinant of A1, B, and determinant of A. So we have calculated this, uh, denominator so we need to calculate the numerator now so in order for us to calculate the determinant of a1 b we need to determine the the matrix a1 b first so a1 b is none other than you take the original matrix a but to it you replace the first column that's the, 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 the that is why we have a one here, all right? This one is indicating the column you are supposed to substitute with the vector B. So we we plug out the first column of A and replace it with vector B. So vector B is, if you recall, guys, it was A B C. Let me take you back. So this was vector B, as you can see, and the remaining two columns. So I took out this first column. And I replaced that column with vector B. 
to get a one b okay so the the, the remaining two co columns come big as they are c zero a so this should be c zero a and the last column here comes back that is as it is so it becomes b a zero like that so this is the matrix a one b and therefore the determinant of a one b that is required in our formula is none other than so in this case we choose if we if you expand along the first row then look we are going to do a lot of calculations there it, it means we have to to do a lot of calculation but if we choose to expand along the third row so along the third row if i expand uh, if i take perfect expansions along the third row then i'm going to say zero times something and then i don't need to evaluate that part because it being, it's being multiplied by zero okay so if i consider uh, my perfect expansions along the third row my first entry okay so i need my sign generator which is minus one to the power of minus one to the power of that position is three one right third row first column so it will be three plus one okay times what is the entry three one what is a three one a three one is a c times what is m three one m three one is the determinant of the matrix that remains so it's a c b zero a this smaller matrix is remaining after so i'm taking out c i'm using c so i close the first column and the third uh, the third row and the first column so if i delete them out of the picture then i'll remain with c0 b8 which is exactly that now secondly i add my sign generator that position is now 3 2 so i'll have 3 to the power 3 plus 2 and the entry is an a and the determinant that remains if i close out the middle column and the third row or men with a b b a a b b a close that plus i don't need to evaluate the last step because it's going to be zero times everything so i'll end up with that so let's just try to calculate this minus one to the power of an even number becomes positive so i have a positive c into if i calculate the determinant of this smaller matrix two by two it's a c minus zero so it's going to be ac only here then minus one to the power of an odd number becomes minus a into a times a that's a squared uh, b times b becomes b squared plus a zero so if i simplify further then this becomes a c sorry a c squared minus a cubed i could leave it like that but it's fine plus a b squared okay so now that i have the two pieces together then i can calculate what x1 is so x1 remember recall that x1 is calculated from the determinant of a1 vector b divided by the determinant of matrix a so this then is equivalent to the numerator is the one that we just calculated now so which is a c squared minus a cubed plus a b squared all over now uh, the determinant of a alone is the one that we calculated in blue and we found out that it was 2 a b c okay so this is now equal to we are about to 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 show the required result so if we factor out a from the numerator then we remain with and rearranging stuff 
we have b squared plus c squared minus a squared divide by if i factor out a from the denominator as well i'll have 2bc a into 2bc like that now i can easily cancel out some stuff a can cancel that a and therefore i'm done so i can say therefore remember x1 is equivalent to this fraction and remember from our supposition we said suppose x1 is equal to cos alpha so therefore i can bring the cos alpha into the picture therefore cos alpha is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc is required okay that's all guys thank you see you in my next videos